Hi, my name is Sean O'Brien, and uh, I apologize for the kind of more subdued uh, traditional slideshow, but uh, hopefully the weird ideas will make up for it. <laughs> uh, tonight I'm going to talk to you about the digitalization of our world and how looking at it in a little bit different way can uh, help us get a more grounded perspective on reality. So consider the possibility that a growing portion of your life is a lie. It's based on a lie. I'm talking about your entertainment, your work tools, your communication devices. And this uh, fakeness is so pervasive that it even underlies our money system. And uh, entire companies are built on it, not just your money, but uh, massive wealth. Of course, I'm talking hyperbolically about the uh, ever-growing presence of the abstract digital experience in our lives. And I want to compare that to concrete and kind of what is the uh, direct physical experience. And what I mean by that is we used to have uh, things like music connected with records and tapes, and there was a tangible thing that you could hold in your hand that connected with that experience, and that's going away. Uh, books is another easy example, and of course that's still the case where you have uh, books connected with reading, but with things like the Kindle and other readers, that's going away too. So the connection with experiences with things is evaporating. And now what we're left with is experiences connected with words on a screen or icons that are built to look like the last physical referent we had for that thing. And we have patterns as products and companies made out of ones and zeros on off switches. I for one think that's uh, a little bit weird. This is the world we live in though. So I want to ask you to kind of uh, look for yourself and consider what do you think, where do you think that line should go between the real and the digital, between the concrete and the abstract is kind of where I'm putting it. So if you, if you get drawn into that, you'll uh, come to this, you know, if real is what you can feel, smell, taste, and see, then real is simply the electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Now the, uh, the question of the broader question of what is real is uh, much older than Morpheus and the Matrix and goes all the way back to Aristotle, has a whole branch of philosophy to study it called ontology. So it's uh, some pretty deep stuff there. Uh, but maybe you're not interested in that. Maybe you're um, just looking for some kind of practical use for what I'm talking about here. And um, I encourage you to take a look at what the difference is in your life between the abstract and the concrete, the direct physical experience versus the digitally generated experience. And I'm going to give you some examples here. So say you get angry at your computer, like this guy. What are you really angry at? Uh, what your direct experience is is of a, a rectangle with light coming out of it and little switches going on and off. Or maybe you're watching TV and you get really mad because the umpire makes a bad call in a, a baseball game. Um, the real physical experience can be seen when you turn the TV off, you know, minus a few lights. Um, so if we go for a more, uh, a more awareness of what's virtual and what's abstract, we can possibly reduce the reactions to that abstract digital experience. And this is going to be important as, as we go forward in time. Um, the digital experiences will get more immersive and more pervasive and consume more of our lives. So it'll be useful to look at what that line is between real and digital and ask for ourselves where it is. So tonight I've tried to get you to you know, think about that in specifics and then look at in general, possibly what is real, and then uh, look at it in terms of practical value for your life and see that um, by, uh, as the digital becomes a more and more, a larger part of our everyday life, 
uh, it can be really useful to recognize that line. Thanks.